Now, could llamas hold the key in the fight against COVID-19? Well, it might not be as daft as it sounds. A COVID treatment made from the animal's antibodies has been hailed by experts at Public Health England. It's one of the most effective ever tested. Well, researchers at the Rosalind Franklin Institute, based in Oxfordshire, have been investigating using llama antibodies to treat COVID since the pandemic first took hold in the UK in 2020. Mm. Well, Professor James Henderson Naismith is the director of the Medical Research Centre at Rosalind Franklin Institute. Uh, a very good morning to you. It's, it's great to see you. Uh, how did this come about? How, how, how was the link made about llamas? So we've known for quite a while that llamas have an unusual antibody. Uh, they're much more chemically stable and they're much smaller than the ones humans have. And because of that, we were able to get them in a form that you can inhale. So this idea that you would directly be able to administer it to the lung and to the nose. And we've tested those in hamsters and shown how effective they are. So good morning, Professor. Uh, how then will this go forward? Um, you know, and, and how has this been, I guess, uh, has it been welcomed in the medical industry? Well, I would imagine so. I don't know. Um, I would have thought so. It's had a, I mean, it's a properly peer-reviewed publication. So how it goes forward is, of course, now that we've shown how effective it is in hamsters, we have to show that it's safe in humans. We have to be able to understand how it gets around the human body. And... After that, then we would hopefully get into clinical trials for humans to test its effectiveness in humans rather than just hamsters. I, I mean, presumably you're working on the basis and, and the hope is that, that this is what, what it appears to be. And uh, uh, this is a game changer in that case. Potentially, yes. I mean, at least in the hamsters, if you give them this medication before you expose them to the virus, they don't get the virus. So that's called prophylactic therapy. So it would give you a sort of short-term immunity, maybe for several days, maybe a week. But we've also shown that if hamsters have COVID, um, after a day, if we give them this medication by just dripping it in their nose, then they recover fully. Uh, hamsters that aren't given the medication die after about seven days. And Professor, could it be used um, to treat or, or against other viruses and diseases, or is it just COVID? This one is highly specific to COVID, but the technology could be used to treat other respiratory viruses. And in fact, that's one of the things that we pursue at the Rosalind Franklin Institute is this idea of uh, using these new platform technologies to find cures for new diseases or the most difficult diseases. Um, I mean, this, this looks on the face of it marvellous. Give us a time scale because obviously the pressure is going to be on. Uh, because any treatment we need sooner rather than later, obviously. So what, what would be the ideal time, time span for this? That's a really good question. So uh, it requires money and it requires uh, engagement with people from, with different skills than I have. I mean, we're uh, basic scientists and I want to emphasize it's a team effort. What we learned from vaccine development was something that was thought to take 10 years could be done in a remarkably short period of time. And it, if nothing changed, it would take about 18 months to two years to get this into people, you know, as a medication. But whether or not we, we should be able to do better, right? But it depends on investment. The baby's Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I would switch that off. Whatever that is, I would switch that off. Uh, but I, I'm just wondering, Professor, that um, because we talk about new variants, uh, a, a treatment's always going to be required, isn't it? How, however, the vaccines, however effective vaccines are. So vaccines are incredibly effective, and I'd urge everybody to get vaccinated. The medications could be useful for if we get a new variant or we get people who have been unable to respond to the vaccine or we get a, a waning immunity in certain sections of the population. So I think everyone would say that in addition to vaccines, having a, a cure for the disease would be highly useful. Mm. Well, fascinating. Professor, thank you so much. I mean, really, really interesting. Well done. Congratulations on, on this research. And we hope you get the support and investment you need. Yeah, it's, 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 and it's a team effort, I should say. Yes, Indeed, of course, and we of wish course. you all, all the best with it. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah Thank absolutely. you very much for joining us this morning, Professor Naismith. Right.